Hello, I'm Marvin from Silver Grain Classics magazine and today we'd like to talk a bit about light meters. Um, I personally think that my light meters are one of the most important devices to use in analog photography, especially as we do not have the possibility to take a look at the LCD screen like digital photographers and on top of that it really helps us to understand the quality of the light we're using. Uh, if there's no light there's nothing on the film and uh, if we know what kind of light type we have and the value of the light, we can really create better. Um, yeah, we just have here as a very good example is the Gusson DigiPro F2, which got recently an update um, in its function. It was on the market quite a while and it's a very light one. It has a nice size, can be easily uh, carried with you. There's no excuse not to have it with you. Um, just needs ordinary batteries and has a reasonable price and a lot of functions that you can use on location or in the studio. So what kind of meter is the F2? The F2 offers you incident light metering, reflected light metering and flash metering. So that covers nearly everything you need except spot metering but um, that's a very specific part. Um, the best about it is, in my opinion, the very simple user interface. It's, uh, it has a very good structured traditional LCD screen, only a few buttons, which are the function buttons, the um, value buttons and the measurement button. That's it. And it also offers you a direct connecting to your X-Sync for your flash system. That's it in general about that, uh, about the user functions. Well, the personal preference for a non-touch screen user interface is just my humble opinion. I mean, I just learned uh, when I was on location that using a touch screen and a camera at the same time was not very practical for me. Um, if you have the light meter, the light meter should support your photography. It shouldn't make it more difficult. So that means you just have to get it out of your pocket while you're holding the camera and you have to make a quick reading. You just have to feel just intuitively, where is the button I have to push? I just push the button, just look at this, have one glance. I just have the value immediately to see nothing else that disturbs you and gives you a, an, an, an instant feedback about the number and then just forget about it. Um, touch screens have disadvantages, especially when it's raining, if the light is different, if you wear gloves. Um, for me, it is definitely not the best choice, but that's my humble opinion. So let's talk a bit about the LCD display in general and in detail. First of all, we have here an upper row with icons that show you this, the uh, chosen mode of light metering. Below that, we have the f-stop and the uh, exposure time. And here is another analog f-stop scale that gives you a visualization, especially when you're going into contrast measuring. Now, especially the set it mode will be chosen via these function buttons, these two arrows, right and left, and you just navigate with them and uh, you just put it on the mode you need at that moment. So what kind of modes do we, can we use and how do we get to them? As earlier mentioned, function buttons and the row of icons. We start with the flash metering icon then we just go to shutter priority of ambient light metering, then ambient light metering with aperture priority. We have also an exposure value mode. That's very helpful for some cameras that do have the exposure value setting. We have the correction button here, the icon for correction. That means we can, for example, adjust it for different filters and we have the ISO setting. If you just got to the ISO setting, you just go to the value buttons and then you just can increase or decrease the ISO value. Then you just go back to your chosen light metering mode and that's it. Press the button of measuring the M button in the, in the center, which is round so that you even can feel it. Just push it and then you get your reading. 
There's one function here which this LCD display shows, it's the contrast metering. And it shows it in an, on an analog scale here on the lower row. Now how does that work um, and what's the idea behind that? Um, normally you know that in, a, in an image, uh, if you just take an image, then um, the contrast is one of the most important um, points to consider. Is your film able to really get all the information or what is the contrast range in general so that you can judge Okay, this will be out of contrast. This is in the contrast range of the film. Now the Gothen F2 gives you that possibility by pushing the M button, holding it, and then scanning your entire area you want to photograph. So like, like I'm doing that now. So that's what you get at the moment then is the entire range of different F-stops you scanned. So that tells you in this case here we have a range between 4 and 11. That tells you the entire contrast range of f-stops we have in this frame which I scanned now. Well all the examples so far we showed were based on incident light metering with that dome. We just pointed it towards the, light, the incoming light and made that measurement. But most cameras use a reflected light metering method. Also that is possible. We just remove here the dome, point it to the scenery, push the button, and then we get a reflected light reading. Now the reflected light metering method is in my opinion not really the best method to be, choose, to be chosen. Um, because the, the, you have to know the fact that all light meters are calibrated on neutral gray which is the gray card you maybe know. And um, that means it is around 18% of reflected light. So that leads very often, especially in the reflected light measuring method, to mis misjudging the, uh, the light situation. Especially when you have situations like you are in a, in, a, in a desert with a lot of bright surface or in a dark area where it is extremely dark. So the light meter always tries to tend to do real blacks into gray and real whites into gray. So that is the advantage of the incident light metering where you just have your dome pointed to the light source and you are measuring the falling, the light that falls into the scenery and you get definitely a reliable value, measuring value then. Now one of the most important functions in my opinion is the flash reading possibilities of the F2. Um, in our workshops we just often, often we just teach also studio light, the use of studio light, especially for film. And we noticed that a lot of photographers who are coming to our workshops are using their digital camera to do a Polaroid or a kind of digital Polaroid to see how is the, the light and how they can judge it. Now, um, unfortunately, what they are using is their camera, the digital camera, they just setting their, their, their studio light to a certain power level and they just do a trial and error until they find the right f-stop. That works to a certain extent um, and I honestly would not really recommend this method, especially when you're using film. Because film acts in certain ways very, very different to your LCD screen. And in my opinion, a light meter, especially a flash light meter for a studio light situation is an absolute must. Now, what kind of method are we using? Are we doing reflected or incident? Theoretically, you could use reflected light, but again, we have the same problems with a neutral gray. That's why it's recommended to use incident reading. And you do it in the following way that you position your light meter very close to the object you want to photograph. Let's say we want to take a photo of me. You have your light set here, your studio light, and you just point the dome in the direction of the light source. Push the measuring button and then you get a reading. And how do we do that? It's quite simple. Two possibilities. Just if you don't have a system with a remote control trigger, 
you have here a sync socket at the light meter. You just connect it with your cable. You just choose with the function button the flash icon here in that corner. And then you just point it to the direction of the light, push the button. The moment you push the measuring button, the studio light fires and we get the correct reading. Now, if you have a more advanced studio light with a remote control trigger and where you just can, for example, increase or decrease the power of your studio light, you need not to connect it directly to your F2. So what you can do is you just put it again the, on the function, the function button to the flash icon, push the measuring button while pointing the dome directly to the light source, and then you just get this F here. Fire with your remote trigger and you get a reading. I mentioned earlier that the Digipro F2 got some new updates. Well, what are these updates? In general, they are five updates. One is an external one that you can see immediately, which is this swivel head compared to the older model that it didn't have. And the four others are electronic and software updates. First of all, the electronic one is if you are using the F2 in a low light situation below a certain exposure value, automatically the LCD screen gets illuminated. Um, the former one didn't do that. Now, um, the others is a, the other remaining three, there's uh, one light method, which is also added now. It can do now lux metering and especially for the United States, can be switched to foot candle. That is, uh, that is whenever you want to judge light, uh, you can use it in cinematography, but you can also use it, for example, when you do your planning of the light situation in a room. You want to, for example, do an exhibition. You want to see that all the pictures do have the same illumination in your exhibited room. Um, and the last ones are the cine functions. Gossel now added this to this model that you can use it for digital cinematography, which is HD Cine. We don't talk about that because we are not a digital magazine. Um, and there is now also for those who are using this type of camera, the Cine function, where you can also choose the frame rate and, and especially the shutter blade angle. Now about the cine mode. What's so interesting about it, especially for Super 8 and 16 millimeter film is, or also 35 millimeter. Um, what's important to know about it? Still photographers using the f-stop and the shutter speed to control the light. Now cine cameras don't use the shutter speed. What they have is the frame rate. And that frame rate is combined with another term. It's called shutter blade and the shutter blade angle. Now, if you are using a certain frame rate, you just have the possibility with the F2 to set your personal frame rate between eight frames per second to 96 frames per second. And this is all based on a 180 degree shutter angle, shutter blade angle. Now, we can also correct the shutter blade angle via the correction function I mentioned earlier. So if you have another shutter blade angle, let's say 160, 120 or whatever, you just go to the correction function, you set your personal shutter speed angle, the factor for it, and then automatically you get the right reading. So for example, if we have here a reading of 25 frames per second now, we just do a metering same way and we get a, f a 25 frames per second we just get the 5.6 f-stop. A light meter is, in my opinion, really a very, very important device for a photographer. So you should always consider if you are getting a light meter, does it really make sense to get one 20 or 30 year old from eBay? Although they were at their time really great devices uh, or tools, but 
they also get older. The sensor gets older, the electronics gets older, sometimes mechanical parts just, just break. And spare parts are difficult to get. Even if you can repair them, you need a high sophisticated uh, technician to calibrate them correctly. On the other hand, there are manufacturers in Japan and in Europe who are really producing modern light meters. These modern light meters are not much more expensive than a used one with a proper service. And you also get a device that has warranty and uh, on the other hand it will do a good job for you for many many years. So if you're considering buying a light meter then just check really the offers for example now Gossen has with the Easter 2020 campaign uh, on their website. So you just can get there a light meter with a very nice discount but make sure that you use the Easter 2020 code which you do not find on their website. So just check it and um, yeah, take a look at it. Light metering in general is not really difficult, but unfortunately it's not self-explanatory. So um, before COVID-19 it was not a big deal. You just went to your local camera store, asked the dealer of his recommendation what kind of light meter you should use and he could give you some introductions to it. Now it's not possible. We also had to cancel our workshops, so that's also not possible. You can't come to our workshops at the moment. So um, together with Gossen, we just decided to bring out a bundle of our three first magazines. Beside the fact that you get 330 pages of any, everything about analog photography, you also get three different articles about the basics of uh, light metering, especially for analog photographers and cinematographers. On top of that, with this bundle, you also get a one-on-one -on -one tutorial with me personally. So just check our website, get that bundle and just contact us, make an appointment and we'll do a one-on-one -on -one tutorial and see where are your problems, how we can help you and maybe we can ask all your questions. We'll answer all your questions. Um, it need not necessarily be a Gossen light meter, it could be any light meter you need, you use. And yeah, would be great to hear from you and stay safe, stay at home, take care.